Dave, the manufacturing manager, is about to launch a couple of work orders for cookie dough ice cream onto his shop floor. He starts his day by reviewing his resource capacity to make sure that he has available capacity at each resource he plans to use. As he reviews his schedule, he sees that he has available internal time on the resources that he plans on using for capacity. He likes what he sees, so he launches a production order for the cookie dough ice cream. The production order window is open and Dave types in the FOO100, which is his cookie dough ice cream, and the production order uses the bill of material as a template to bring in the basic structure of how to make the cookie dough ice cream. We can see that there are three resources used, a blending machine, a quality control check, and a packing operation. At the blending machine, we use three different items of a 14% plain ice cream mix, some cookie dough flavor, some vanilla flavor, and some caramel flavor. Those are available to issue to the production order. So while we're in the plan status, Jason can also plan a due date when he wants this production order to be delivered off the shop floor to the warehouse. He could also associate this production order with a specific sales order or a specific customer and track that information in the system as well. Jason's going to go ahead and say that I'm going to do five units of cookie dough ice cream and when he does that you can see it updates the planned quantities of what he's going to use in the production order to make the ice cream. We're going to add this to his system now. So once you add the production order to the system it is now available to release to the shop floor. So when we release this, this to the shop floor we now can issue materials to this work order. So if we issued those raw materials to the blending operation, we're actually putting cost into the work order and we're starting to consume the cost of each resource. When we look at the resource, we can see that for each resource, we have some standard costing of $55 an hour. We're consuming some electricity and some admin burden. So for each hour we use this resource, we're adding up $59 of cost. He goes ahead and plans this five units for 512. So as he goes through the process, people are issuing components and at the end of the day, they can report completion. And then this would go into the warehouse for and be available for shipment. So Dave wants to look at all of the open orders on his shop floor, so he opens up his open items list. The open items list gives him an easy to use tool to see everything that's going on on his shop floor. These columns are live, so if he wanted to double click on the top and see all of his planned orders versus all of his released orders, it's as simple as a click. Dave wants to see how many orders do I have for cookie dough ice cream, and he can come to this um, filter and see these are all of the orders and the statuses that they are currently in. He may also want to look at order due dates and how he's doing on the floor in terms of, of overdue or not. And we can see that he's got some problems with some late orders. Down here on the right, we can also see that some of these production orders are associated with a specific customer or a specific sales order, and the golden arrow would allow us to drill down to the detail of that sales order that's associated with the manufacturing order and keep that information together throughout the system. Naturally, Dave could kick this all out to Excel if he wanted to, but this gives him the kind of tool that helps him manage his day. So this has been kind of a walkthrough of how Dave looks at his shop floor for capacity, launches a planned work order, and then manages all of the work on his shop floor.